This is the first in a series of videos dedicated to starting bassoonists and also the teachers who teach young bassoonists or even beginning adult bassoonists. Hope you'll find it helpful. In this particular lesson, we'll be discussing the care and maintenance of the bassoon reed and the bassoon uh, playing position, also a little bit on the embouchure position, and just a few basic fingerings. So let's get started. Uh, first off, with the bassoon reed, I suggest that you soak it in tepid or lukewarm water. Uh, generally, I, I find uh, 30 seconds to a minute is, is fine for me if it's a reed that I'm playing off and on every day. If it's a reed that hasn't been played in quite a while, it may need as much as five minutes. But once soaked, uh, the reed is, is ready to play. Um, the bassoon embouchure is a very flexible embouchure. Uh, unlike the single reed instruments where the embouchure is fixed to the reed, the bassoon reed will move in and out of the mouth will, and, the, and the embouchure, especially the jaw, will, will be moving uh, throughout the range of the instruments and in fact our dynamics are, are quite a bit uh, changed by the, the position of, of the jaw and the embouchure. So it's important to realize that we use a very flexible embouchure on the bassoon. And one way in which to think about the position of the embouchure is to, is to uh, experiment with a low whistle. The jaw is dropped, uh, the embouchure is, is sort of forming around the reed, and with that low whistle embouchure, if you just take your finger and roll your lips in a little bit, you've got a close yeah, approximation to uh, a bassoon embouchure. You can uh, tell the proper bassoon embouchure, particularly for the lower register of the instrument, by the way the reed plays or, or crows. Uh, if you put the bassoon reed in your mouth, again with that embouchure, I'm right now just getting a single higher pitch. If I drop my jaw, loosen the embouchure a little bit, I get the octave below it. You can hear how it's, it's dropping in pitch. And then if I loosen it even more, we get what we call a crow on the bassoon reed. And the crow is with the, the very loosest embouchure. And that would be a type of embouchure that would particularly be used in the very low register of the bassoon. As you get higher and higher on the bassoon, your, your embouchure tends to tighten in order to get the, the higher notes. But for now, for the beginner, it's good to have that looser embouchure play a forte so, a tone, a, a loud sound. So you, you use that as a reference then for the other embouchures. Okay, so we're ready now. Uh, now that you understand a little bit of the embouchure and things, oh, I've, I've got to talk to you a little bit about tonguing. So we start each note on the bassoon with the tongue on the reed, releasing the tongue. If this is the reed and this is your tongue, the air starts, the tongue is on the reed, you release it, the reed vibrates, and then for now, we can stop it with the air. For now, let's, we'll, we'll just stop it for the tongue, and we'll talk about articulation a little later on in some of our other lessons. So give that a try. Start and stop with the tongue. And I'm going to get a little closer. I hope I don't gross you out on this, but I'm going to show you the position that I use with the tongue on the bassoon reed. So if, if this is the bassoon reed and this is the tongue, I find that the bassoon reed hits just a little bit back from the tip of the tongue on the top of the tongue and then I release and go back and forward like that. All right, now we're ready to put together the bassoon. I know you're excited to get your bassoon together for the first time. Well, here we have the bassoon case, which we've just opened, and our bassoon here. And I'm gonna instruct you now on the proper steps to put together the bassoon. First, you pick up the boot joint 
and you want to pick it up in such a way that you know you're not crushing the keys or anything the key work so holding it from the sides is probably best and I position it with the pancake key or the E key facing me next I pick up the tenor joint and the tenor joint fits right in to the boot joint and the tenor joint will have a space such as this so it's right around the rim now many bassoons and this is in fact one of them may come from the factory with a line I think you can see that on the video scribed in and let me get the reflection right there you go there you can see it and so you need to line those two up right like that and we are then set that's in the proper place next we put in the long joint long joint fits in like this and push it down now most bassoons at the top will have a locking mechanism and this one has a locking mechanism that fits right in and closes over like that and last of all we put on the bell of the bassoon and to put on the bell of the bassoon you need to hold down this pad so the key is up and you slip it on none of the joints should be overly tight um, the bassoon should not fall apart when you pick it up like this but you don't want to damage anything by by forcing it together now let's uh, discuss a little bit here some other aspects of the bassoon case uh, here we have our two bassoon vocals and it has these little twists that you you twist in order to get the vocals out uh, this particular case here's our seat strap which we'll be showing later and this case has its uh, reeds in here reed case and you need to find a good place for the reeds now many reeds you purchase will come in a small little tube like this but this does not allow for enough air circulation for the reed to dry out and it might mold and in fact this case as it is probably needs some holes drilled into it just to allow for a little more ventilation <laughs> Thank you.